Is death helpful? Should people, in fact, borrow? If you had to create savings to wholly fund a business, it's going to take an awfully longer period for people to exercise their talents and their abilities and faculties towards contributing to the economy. But when you borrow money without the intention of paying back, where the debt is rested with people that are not responsible, that becomes a challenge. It becomes a challenge for the economy, it becomes, and also it becomes a challenge even for the survival of the financial system. Panic. Around the world, stock markets continue their terrifying climb. Stocks all around the world are tanking because of the price. The U.S. Central Bank last year revealed major weaknesses in the banking sector. customers that their money is safe, but the appeals appear to be falling on deaf ears. Hamcoin came as a result of the financial crisis that engulfed almost the whole world. And it came in at a very critical time for Nigeria around November 2010. Eight institutions out of 23 banking institutions failing at that time would have created significant systemic risk. So non-performing loans had risen to anything between 20 and 30 percent. Hong was created first to create financial stability in the system. The internal control systems were not there. Due diligence were not being done. Compliance with collateral requirements were not being done. The banking system will have collapsed. When the banking system collapses, all depositors suffer, and that includes big, medium, and small people. You needed to act fast. Uh, we needed to act and to ensure that uh, the financial sector was stabilized within a few months. Without a doubt, those eight banks that were intervened in in 2009 would have gone under. Not only would it have gone down on the eight institutions, we would have affected even the healthy institutions that existed. It was able to provide liquidity, it was able to recapitalize some of those banks, and it was able to buy some of those non-performing loans, because the loans were challenged. Some of them were already inside the mutuary. Amcon bought almost 13,000 loans at a cost of about 3.7 trillion. You have to keep in mind that Amcon doesn't get any subvention from government. So we borrowed money to buy this there. So we're also conscious that we have to also pay that down at some point. We are currently sitting on about six trillion. At last count, a hundred people owe us 2.7 trillion. In the spirit of targets, people carry short-term funds to fund long-term business. I will call it financial rascality. As people are negotiating loans, they are saying what they can get for themselves. People do obtain a loan to advance the cost of a farming business, and that loan ends up in something entirely different, which was because there was little or no accountability. There's a mindset that when you take bank loans, it's free money. There are 120 or so debtors who represent more than 80% of what Amcon paid to buy debt, who have remained recalcitrant, difficult, trying to tie us up in court. Our next move is to confront these debtors. We call them monsters. And we're determined to tame those monsters. The danger is, if we don't recover this money, the taxpayer will pay for it. So we all must all put our hands on deck to ensure that those selfish people do not continue to have a field day. Amcon's intention is not to kill any business. Amcon has demonstrated before that they could support businesses that show sign of growth. If I have a portfolio of 100 billion to fund businesses and I give 80 billion to irresponsible people, what happens? I have not optimized that portfolio. But where I have 100 billion and I can give it to viable businesses, what they will do is they will take the 100 billion and then generate a trillion because the viability of those businesses will make the economy more robust and will also make the income generating potential for the country larger. If you know the history of uh, Pijot Otomobu, and maybe even in the northern side of the country, it was the single most important industry in Kaduna. Production activities uh, of uh, pan actually peaked in the mid-80s. The output was about 90,000 cars per annum. But by 2012, 
We are talking about in hundreds. The company was heavily indebted, that there was nothing to be done. Amcom became the majority shareholder of PAN because it needed to save it from imminent collapse. If Amcon had not intervened in PAN, the bankers that PAN was heavily indebted to would have ripped the place apart. Given the support of Amcon, the company had no single exposure to any bank. Pojo has survived, which is one of the major objectives of Amcon's intervention. Because as I speak, we have orders, orders of over 600 cars. I see Pan still roaring and soaring high. So the factory that we have on that Spark West is a steel fabrication and a steel galvanizing facility. That happens to be the first galvanizing factory in Nigeria. The banking crisis started, our debts were sold to Amcon. So the vision we sold to Amcon is this factory is built as an import substitute that if you support us, to activate the factory, though you already have a large size debt in your books against our name, but we still need your support to activate the factory. Amcon not only gave us funding, they also permitted the owners of the vision to manage the business with very limited interference from them. We were able to complete the factory, we were able to start production, and we were able to gain the confidence of the market. So today, when MTN buys towers, it comes predominantly from our factory. Airtel towers are from our factory. We ship goods to Ghana. We ship goods to Zambia, Cameroon, Gabon, Côte d'Ivoire, and Rwanda, from Nigeria to all those countries. We had a 2015-2016 year that our capacity utilization went up drastically. Amcon supported us with funding, they supported us in strengthening our management, and they supported us in ensuring that a strong corporate governance in how we run the business. Sparkwest as an industry had not been supported by Amcon. A number of industries that we're serving today would have run into big crises. Our approach is first and foremost conciliatory. We seek to negotiate and come to a resolution on repayment terms with the debtor. We had a total of about 6,600 accounts that were outsourced to 121 asset management partners who we call EMPs were appointed to manage these loans. Largely, it has been successful. So, of course, there are concessions and um, we have standards and rules. We have minimum benchmarks set by CBN below which Amcon is not allowed to negotiate. It's only when the debtor refuses to agree to reasonable terms or persistently breaches on agreed terms that will consider alternative strong harm tactics, which may include engagement of debt recovery agents or referring the matter to the judicial process. The, the so-called big men in Nigeria, they have businesses, they have cash flows, but they are telling you, I have this money, I can pay, but I will not pay you because I can go to a court and obtain some funny injunctions. We have so many of our obligors that are engaged in litigation with us and because of that we are not able to carry out the evaluation of this asset because of the court cases. We have over 1.6 trillion naira under litigations and enforcement. Now you don't have control over the courts. The courts can decide to adjourn your case till next two years. How do you realize this money? And these are very clear cases. Some of these obligors are, that are owing us are still doing business, using other names to do business. Government is still giving them mandates to come and do business. And you can't ruin Amcon 50 billion, 100 billion on this side. Then you go to NNPC or one of the agencies or works or something, then you're enjoying a contract running as if it's a different government. And the implication of this is that at the stage of selling, we find out that the assets are overvalued and we're not able to sell. What we need strongly is the ability to be able to enforce the law. Some people don't like to honor their obligations. So you need to have a legal framework that gives you absolute right on those assets so that they are motivated to come and talk to you honorably and voluntarily. We need, for example, the Amcon Act to be modified to give us powers to go after these obligos. We've come with a notion, majority of us, that bank loan is part of national cake. Let people know, or our children know that if you take a bank loan, you must pay. 
We shouldn't be creating strong men, but create strong institutions. If, if, for example, uh, your judicial system is cleaned up, if, for example, the ministries are cleaned up, you will see people bringing investments to Nigeria. So we need to ensure that our economy is managed in a way that interest rates are low and stable, exchange rates are stable and predictable. It's that kind of environment that makes the utilization of debt easier. There is no nice way of recovering money. There is no nice way of recovering money. The only nicest way of recovering money is you sit down and you communicate. We've received tremendous cooperation from the Central Bank of Nigeria and Collaborative. We can't thank the Minister of Finance enough. I'm going to intervene in around 22 banks. So if you begin to imagine what would have happened without this intervention, your guess would be as good as mine. Nobody knows what Nigeria would have become. When Amcon started, and I was privileged to be, to be here at the time, it was quite difficult to convince people to come and pay off their debts. Those who did it at that time are in a much better position now. So it's not only a question of collecting debt, it's ensuring that debts are collected in a way that more people get to work, there is output, and the Nigerian taxpayer who sacrificed by the creation of this Amcon gets something in return. They can rest assured that Amcon is not going to stop. Amcon will keep coming until we get that money back. We're quite careful to ensure that we got people with the right skills. We have one of the best set of staff you can find in any industry. I would say that it's a good place to work. It's a place we're all very proud of. To do great things for this nation, that alone motivates us to keep our focus. Achieving financial stability in the system is a, is a, is a success story. At least saving the banks from extinction is a, is a success story. No challenge, I knew we were focused on the ball and I knew we were going to deliver. Debt in itself is not bad. It's good to go and borrow money and do something positive about it. It's important that people respect their obligation. It's important that people pay their debt. The average Nigerian needs to accept the message that until we become good, the nation is not likely to be good. But do we need that? You, you can bet we do. Amcon came in to assist the economy, to assist the businessman, to assist in employment, to assist in tax earnings. And it's wrong to look at Amcon as the bad guys. We're called bad, but we've done good things. So Amcon should be appreciated as the good guys, as the good institution, as a savior in the financial sector. And for me, Nigeria's future looks very bright because once we remove impunity and we are able to do things right, it's just a question of time. Quite a lot of those challenges will be, will be, will be overcome.